Good afternoon, this is That One Guy broadcasting from Sunny Holland. Uh, today's video is going to be a quick tutorial on probes, because I spent the uh, last week trying to uh, figure out how to build a probe. So, alright, first things first, uh, you're going to need a probe body. Uh, these consume electricity. So let's go ahead and put a little extra battery on there. Uh, after my last probe experiments, uh, I decided to look up some things about probes and, and the ionic pro to the ion drive. And I discovered a couple of things. Number one, one thing of fuel is not enough to get out to Joule. However, two things of fuel is enough to get captured. Uh, if you want a return trip, uh, that's going to take a lot more than that. So, anyways, this is the base of our probe. This is enough reserve energy that even if we're behind the planet, the probe will not straight up die. Um, when I say behind, I mean the planet is between the sun and your probe. And uh, you're not really going to be using these two batteries for maneuvering. Uh, next thing we're going to need is some sort of control. And I like the advanced avionics package because it kind of looks like it has a camera built in. Um, let's see, moving on. You're going to need some source of power. Now, RTGs are good if you don't want to um, run out of power ever, but you need a lot of them. Uh, and they eventually decay to nothing. So what I like doing is I like taking, uh, I'm sorry, the 1x6 photovoltaics and making six of them. And this is a new craft design that I uh, did a couple of weeks ago. Well, I guess last week, after my first probe failed, I decided to try a different probe. Now, this will give you enough energy around Kerbin. Just these six, I believe, yeah, it produces uh, two units a second. Uh, this consumes uh, 12 units, so one ring of these would be enough to power the engine near Kerbin. However, uh, the game uses mechanics that, as you get farther out from the sun, uh, you consume or these produce less um, electric charge, which it doesn't exactly follow the inverse square properties of light, but it's close enough for an approximation. Now, the other thing I like to do is just to guarantee, you know, end all be all, guarantee that I will not run out of power. I put on uh, six of these on the front of it. Uh, the reason being, um, while we're getting up into space, or if I need to just wait for this to get around to the other side, or for whatever reason all of these panels are not able to look at the sun, uh, these are just a fail-safe. Now, let's see. Uh, what I normally do is I assume this antenna is powerful enough to talk to Kerbin uh, in some sort of just, you know, in my mind. It doesn't really matter. But then the next thing, not crew, uh, action groups, here we go. I put custom one to toggle both sets of photovoltaics, and uh, there we go. That's a probe. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to not really time compress, because I'm trying to make these videos a little shorter, a little bit snappier, so I'm trying a new form of editing. So here we go. Okay, so this is our completed rocket. It's a very simple uh, rocket. Not very powerful. I put the medium version of the Rocco Max, the Skipper liquid engine, because this is our payload that we're lifting to orbit. And the nice thing about probes, um, they're light enough that if you so choose, you may put them on the back of uh, an SSTO, and you can take them up into orbit and launch them that way. Uh, now what this is, is this is just enough to get us out of the atmosphere into a very high orbit, and this is enough to sort of get us almost into orbit, and then from there the ion engine can do the rest, which is why I actually have uh, these batteries, and I will explain that in a second with our launch profile, so let's go to the launch pad. Okay, so here is our probe, and uh, what we're going to do is we're going to hit M, and then pull up that for later, and I think that our target today uh, yeah, let's go ahead, and we're going to do a very complex mission, and we're going to go to Duna. Um, partially because the burns are a little less, but also because we're going to encounter a transfer window 
uh, sooner than we would with Joule. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and cut out until we are in position to launch. Okay, and here we are. We are at about 45 degrees uh, between Duna and Kerbin. Um, so we're going to zoom back in to Kerbin because we need to launch at a very specific time of day. Uh, so let's go ahead and speed it up. When you're leaving the... Uh, that made no sense. When your target is beyond the orbit of Kerbin, uh, and by that I mean uh, past Kerbin in its orbit around the star. There we go. I know that uh, that's not much of a difference, but I like being precise. You want to enter into a west-to-east orbit instead of an east-to-west. Now, the reason for that is, in order to get our burns to be the most efficient, I want to burn on the daylight side of the planet. So what we're going to do is we're just going to uh, do a standard launch. Um, I assume that you know how to do this. Uh, if you don't, I will go ahead and put a link to some of my videos about how to get into orbit, or my just beginner's tutorial series in general. So anyways, in 3, 2, 1, I'm going to launch, and then I'm going to cut out until the next important piece of the flight. Okay, now we're back. I have just completed my gravity turn, and uh, I would like to point out some things that make this particular flight profile different than uh, just an orbital flight profile for Kerbin that you would do for a uh, manned mission or a more powerful craft. Uh, and the reason that you would uh, go higher, which is what we're going to do, we're actually going to let this uh, lower stage uh, right here burn itself out uh, while we are at the 60 degree above the horizon heading at bearing I guess 269 it doesn't really matter we're within a degree so I'm a happy camper so we're gonna let it burn itself out and we're going to have an apoapsis of probably about 250 kilometers above the surface of the planet which is what we're aiming for, especially if uh, I hadn't done a fresh save file for my U for my new YouTube, uh, I would have various stations and satellites and uh, such like that orbiting around here, and uh, I definitely do not want this burning into that because uh, space is quick. Uh, things in space are quick, so let's see what we've got. Hmm. Well, I was off. That is a... Okay, it's a little over half a million meters away from the planet, which is good, because we can mess around with the uh, orbital mechanics later. Now I'm going to hit X. I'm going to jettison the lower stage, which will come back down onto the planet. I'm going to time compress until we get out here. Then... Uh going to slow it down a little bit. We have 20 seconds, so let's go ahead and roll our craft to the prograde vector. And we're going to fire her up. Now, uh, this is not the most fuel efficient burn, but the nice thing about probes is they are very, very small. So you don't need to necessarily have the most efficient rocket in the world to get this into orbit. Uh, we are going to burn through a lot of fuel getting ourselves almost into orbit, but uh, the higher orbit is definitely the more optimal orbit for missions such as these. Uh, because the higher your orbit, the less time you spend behind the planet. And here we go. We're going to slow down our burn rate. There we go, 15,000. That'll let this just come back down and get burned up. We used about half a fuel tank. I would use less fuel on this, so let's do stage set. I would use less fuel on this, but there's no point to it. So let's go ahead and power up completely, and then hit 1 and watch this as it unfolds, because I've always found this to be a very cool thing to look at. And now we're actually collecting more power than we're using. So let's go back to the map view, and all we really need is for this to just skip out past 70,000. Uh, and that guarantees that we're not going to come back down into the atmosphere. Uh, I have tried just, you know, a 65,000 periapsis, but at the altitudes and speeds that are required to maintain orbit, 
uh, I came back down, um, actually, in my first attempt to record my probe derp video. Uh, let's see, other things about a probe. You'll notice that I'm being very efficient right now, and because I'm in the sunlight, uh, I'm not using any electrical charge whatsoever. So what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to keep burning right now um, past uh, where I think I would have any stations or anything, uh, simply because if I had stations, I would burn past that uh, because then I would guaranteed not intersect any orbits, even though the likelihood of smacking into something is incredibly uh, unlikely. So I'm going to go to 75 kilometers. There we go. Now we have our probe in orbit. It's collecting uh, solar energy, and we are going to be able to do our interplanetary burn. Now to set that up, uh, we just do our standard interplanetary profile. Uh, we click on Duna, set her as the target, come back in. Now what's going to be different uh, in this instance than other instances of interplanetary travel is that our periapsis, I'm sorry, our prograde and our retrograde are reversed from each other, which means uh, the more you pull west, the more we are going to leave the planet. So that's not it. Which means I need to, let me see, come back on this a little bit. And this is really just trial and error, just drag it around, it's not that big of a deal. Uh, <laughs> Alright. The thing of this is it's not a very circular orbit, so I can actually play with this a lot more uh, to try and get my perfect intersection angle. Now, am I getting closer or farther? Anyways. While I try to figure this out, I'm going to go ahead and uh, cut the video. Alright, and we're back. Uh, what I'm doing is I actually have to burn more than I necessarily need to, but on the flip side of that, uh, I will have plenty of fuel. Heck, I could actually probably return this probe to Kerbin after I'm done. Now what we're going to do is when this marker right here is 30 degrees below the prograde vector, which means at 20 degrees below the horizon, I will begin my burn. So here we go, and slowing it down. Got it. So now I align my craft. And the nice thing is, even though we are technically burning on the dark side of the planet, the dark side, uh, even though we are technically burning on the dark side of the planet, we are exposed to sunlight. And that's why we want this very, very high orbit, because if I was down at a 100 kilometer orbit, uh, that is actually down right about here, uh, so I would still be in the dark and I would be using a lot of electrical energy and there's a very good chance that I would run out of electrical energy. Now what you're going to want to do during this burn is to hold ALT and time compress physically to uh, four times, otherwise these burns are going to take forever. Now you're going to be using the Oberth effect quite a lot. Uh, first what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to actually switch your orbit um, in this case. And that's actually the reason that I launched uh, just after uh, sunset here, is so that the high point of my orbit um, will be on this side of the planet, because I'm probably going to have to burn more uh, from this to here, that angle, rather than here to here. Uh, so, as you see, my periapsis is coming up, and I will cut uh, once we finish all of our burns in order to get out uh, to Duna. Okay, and uh, now we are in a solar orbit. I was trying to force my way into a Duna encounter, but uh, that uh, that did not happen. Oh boy, what do we have going on here? Well, we are definitely losing charge, but the nice thing is about uh, Probe is I can actually futz with it until I'm gaining charge. Uh, let me see why this is. Ah, I do not have that many solar panels pointed at the sun. That's also why I've got these for when I have burns such as this. Now, uh, let's see. We're just bringing down the apoapsis a bit. Uh, this is not going to be that long of a burn. But what we're going to do is we're going to try and encounter Duna. And uh, how long will we have? The Duna encounter is at... We will have a little under an hour to get captured by Duna. Now, uh, our Duna periapsis is not very good, 
but at the same time, I feel like we're going to be able to get captured. The one thing about ion probes is while they do have an insane amount of uh, ISP, they do not uh, they do not burn very quickly at all. In fact, if you tried to encounter, say, Lathe, while you were uh, trying to circularize your orbit around Joule, you would actually just blitz right through the orbit without even having a hope of slowing down. Um, now, if you do want to go visit moons, I am going to talk about how to do that when we get to Duna, but for now, I'm just going to cover a couple of basic interplanetary travel things. Number one, be sure that your uh, target object and your spacecraft that you're trying to hit that target object are within 0.1 of a degree from each other as far as um, ascending and descending orbits. Uh, the other thing is the closer you can get to matching an orbit. For example, uh, this is okay. However, if I was trying to blitz it right here like I was, um, I would actually have to slow down more and I would be wasting more fuel. Uh, I'm not actually wasting any fuel that I haven't already planned to waste right now because I would have had to use this to slow down to get to Duna in the first place. Uh, so I'm just going to go ahead, cut out, and I'll get back to you when we're correcting for Duna. Okay, and uh, we are approaching Duna. I managed to get a periapsis of uh, 387 kilometers and some chains. Chains. Change. Uh, you want to try to get the periapsis as close as possible, especially with this probe, uh, because that ensures the most time. Now let me see here. I am definitely in a goofy orbit. So what we're going to do is we... Hmm, lies in deceit. Ha. So what we're going to do is, once we get close to the periapsis, uh, we're going to start a burn. Um, and this is a probe that I want orbiting Ike, just because I want to show people how to do that. And Ike is a pretty cool moon, uh, if you've never been. I highly recommend. So what we're going to do is we're going to... Boom. Do that, and throttle up. Now, as you'll notice, we are not losing any electrical charge. That is probably because the sun is in such a way, yep, that most of my solar panels are exposed to it. So now all we have to do is physically time compress and just wait for this orbit to get a little less wonky. Uh, this is going to be coming down. This is going to be moving up in a very quick manner. Uh, as it must for being captured. And so long as this is getting farther away, we'll be all right. Uh, let me just double check and see how much speed we need to lose. I'm not thinking it's going to be that much just to get captured. No, it is not. We are, in fact, going to get captured, and we do, in fact, want a very, very... Whoa. Okay, now we're just tripping out. Uh, we do, in fact, want a very high apoapsis so that we may correct our orbit uh, later. So I don't remember exactly how long it takes uh, for one complete revolution on a really wonky orbit, but I do feel that even though we have literally just blitzed by our periapsis, we're going to be okay. Uh, let's get a little bit better on our retrograde burn there. And, yep. Yeah, there's no way in heck we're going to get to that before our burn is completed, which is what we want. Because even if we get out to here and get captured, that's, that's still a win. So, uh, I'm going to cut back in as I explain how to uh, reset your orbit uh, in a very easy, easy fashion. All right, and we're back. I'm going to set Ike as my target because I want to see the ascending and descending nodes. Now, what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to try to zero my orbit uh, right at the ascending node because my craft... Oops. My craft... Stop that. There we go. My craft will be roughly... Uh, well, I'm sorry. My craft will not be roughly. My craft will be losing uh, velocity bloop, as I go. So, here we are at the ascending node. We need to lose 
500 meters a second of velocity. Now, ordinarily, this happens a lot farther out from the planet, and we don't need to be that particularly precise with this, as you'll see I'm quite a bit above the ascending node, because all I'm trying to do is get within 10 degrees either way of the equator on this planet in order to make my orbit an east-west orbit, so that when I intersect this moon right here, because it is also in an east-west orbit, I don't have to mess with things like um, reverse orbits or anything like that. It's the same reason that NASA goes to the moon by going in the same direction that the moon goes. Uh, but one thing you'll, you'll notice is I am not even halfway through my fuel yet. Even in trips out to Joule, I generally have about 300 units of fuel left, which is more than enough to go out and explore any moon that your heart would want. Uh, it's just you're going to have to be good at transfer orbits. And in fact, in another save file, I have a probe very similar to this, just orbiting Joule uh, slightly outside the orbit of Tylo, uh, which that's a pretty easy orbit to get to, and if you want to get to pretty much any moon from there, uh, it's not that wonky of an orbit that you would encounter and then immediately just not counter anymore. Uh, so now, let me see, we are slightly past it. I'm not entirely sure how far past it we are, but uh, if I were to just leave it like this, we would definitely smash into Duna, which is no bueno. Um, yep, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut out, and then I will... Uh, just rejoin once my orbit is east-west-ish. Okay, so now we have, for all intents and purposes, pulled a stall. That means if I didn't do anything, we would smack down on the planet pretty much right where we are. Now, I am not even close to the equator, which is unfortunate. However, what I am going to do is I am going to begin our east-west burn, and this will give us a better idea of where we are. Looks like we're somewhere in the neighborhood of 10 degrees above the equator. Excellent. Um, that's a very easy to correct for burn, and I, with the particular system here, probably won't even correct for it within 5 degrees. Nice. All right. Color me a happy camper. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and circularize this orbit, and then see what I can do about intersecting uh, Ike. So I'll get back to you when we are circularized. Okay, and we have circularized the orbit, and I have got my maneuver in order to intersect uh, Ike. So let's see, this is a 42 second burn, so I can pretty much roll up right on this node. So, let's see here. There we go. Whoop, 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 whoop. Eh, close enough. The thing that I really like about... Uh, Duna is that its gravity is low enough that even if I screw up like this, I'm still going to be okay. So, what I'm doing is I'm just... trying some stuff to... make my orbit intersect that, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the descending node to correct for my uh, differential in orbital incline. Up, oh, up, oh, up, oh, up, oh. we're behind the planet. Hmm, didn't count on that. Alright, so, struggle bus. Uh, <laughs> oops. Uh, let's see if doing that will help. The nice thing about, what the heck, the nice thing about Ike is it moves slow enough that even if I screw up pretty badly like I just did, uh, I'm still going to be alright, so it's much less of a, uh, it's much less of a problem. Estimated burn time three hours? Ugh, oh, this thing cannot estimate for shit. So, yep. What we're doing is we're just pushing our orbit out here, and we're going to enter into a nice east-west orbit around uh, Ike. And from there, we'll get both a vantage point of Duna's only moon and Duna itself. So let's go ahead and get rid of... Whoop, 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 whoop. 
Uh, yep, that got a little intense pretty quickly. Let's go ahead and back this up. See if we can't see if we can't get a little closer here. All right. Yep. Nope. Okay, that looks like it's about as close as we're gonna get. Uh, so let's go ahead and do such things as those. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa! Crap. Uh, huh. The one thing about uh the Duna system is the gravity is a little bit wonky. So what I need to do is I need to get my orbital speed up. As much as I possibly can. So as long as I'm in the sun I'll be okay. We'll come back to this. Alright, and we're back. Um, Let's see here. I am successfully in orbit around Ike. Now the advantages of this for observing Duna. Um, I'm not going to have any residual light, especially if I'm uh, photographing Duna from the dark side of the planet, or from the dark side of the moon. Unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to see all of Duna as these two bodies are tidally locked, but at the same time, uh, this would be good for stationary observation, um, atmospheric conditions without actually sending down a surface probe, um, and this takes a lot less fuel. Uh, so let's go ahead and wait for the sunrise. There we go. And uh, let's get over uh, slightly more. Alright, so we're actually zipping along at a pretty good pace. We're not that high off the uh, surface of the planet. So, yep, that is how ion probes work. I'm glad I figured that out. Thanks for sticking with me through this, and I guess if you want me to go back to my old editing process where I add music, uh, just let me know. If not, and you think this is better, let me know. Alright, this has been That One Guy. Have a nice day.